Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our um, people. We've got we've got somebody who's up at four o'clock in the morning in Australia. Oh, it's just brilliant to have such a wide range of of people here again. And I say I'm really looking forward to this because, as we've been saying beforehand, this is such a relevant topic now, and it's so important for us all to be to be considering the impact of working with speakers of other languages when um, teaching our mathematics. So over to you, Lisanne. Also from my side, a very warm welcome to everybody, especially to the, today's presenter, Gabriele Kaiser. Uh, and I have the pleasure to uh, introduce her today and her um, presentation. Um, Gabriele started with a master's degree as a teacher for mathematics and humanities. And since then uh, proceeded to work in the research of mathematics education. Among other topics, she has researched issues of teacher education and professional skills of teachers, has also done uh, multiple further research um, projects, among them um, ones with specific focuses on gender or culture. Um, she has an impressive li list of uh, publications. She is the uh, ICMI representative for Germany. Um, and also the editor-in-chief of the um, highly ranked ZDM Mathematics Education Journal. Uh, since 1998, she's a professor at the University of Hamburg, where I had the pleasure of working with her for four years in the Hamburg Numeracy Project. And this is the project where she and her team, especially uh, Michael Lussenhop, did research on mathematics education for students that have new, newly arrived in Germany. And uh, I guess this is uh, the topic that we will hear more about. This is the research that we will um, hear more about uh, in the next hour. So again, um, thank you so much for being here, Gabriele, and we are excited to listen to you and your findings. Yes, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a great pleasure and honor to be here and to see a few friends with whom I have worked in the past and a few friends who I had a chance to meet last year, at least virtually. And of course, we all hope uh, for meetings in person. But on the other hand, I mean, it has become so convenient to have these kind of meetings. So I'm pretty certain they will continue. Yes, uh, the to topic of my talk, and thank you very much, Lisanne, for the very friendly introduction. It, actually, this uh, presentation is coming uh, out of the Hamburg Numeracy Project, uh, and many of you have actually met a work of this uh, research group last year when you were in Hamburg. And the theme is Secondary Teachers' Perspectives on Mathematics Teaching for Newly Arrived Students in German Schools. And I'm pretty certain that what I'm going to present today is not only valid for German schools. And as already said, I'm giving the talk, but Michael Lussenhoop, on uh, who, uh, whose work the presentation is based, uh, is present as well. So, yes, the current context. I mean, I can make it very short. We have a strong increase of newly arrived students in Hamburg and Germany. I would say in the last, I have brought a diagram with me in the last 10 years. Uh, you see uh, on the uh, uh, orange uh, graph, you see the number of students arriving, uh, uh, which have arrived per year. And you see how it, it's getting up with a few uh, uh, changes. Uh, and you see how they are, they are distributed at different kinds of schools. Uh, and uh, actually, these figures are now growing dramatically. I would think not only in Germany, but in many parts uh, of Europe, especially in Poland, uh, Slovenia, and so on, because with a, uh, we have now many uh, refugees from uh, Ukraine. And these uh, students, these newly arrived students, are uh, actually uh, uh, taught or educated in international preparatory classes. I will say a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Uh, and uh, we have to see that these students receive lessons, lessons in different subjects, but with a focus on German. So I have outlined my talk as follows. I will quickly say something about the background of the study. 
then the state of research, research questions, and very quickly the theoretical framework, which comes directly out of the state of research. Uh, then I will describe the method, method, methodical approach, results and discussion, of course, will be the main focus. And then I will close with limitations and possible consequence. And as already said, uh, the results presented are part of the PhD study by Michael Lusenhoop, and the whole project was carried out in the frame of the Hamburg Numeracy Project, which was guided by Uncle Kurt Lusen and funded by the Hamburg Ministry for Science and Research. So quickly to the background of the study. Uh, if we look at legal aspects of schooling migrant students, you see that there are uh, laws in Hamburg. Hamburg, by the way, is the second biggest city in Germany, 1.8 million inhabitants. Uh, and here it is uh, stated that every young person has the right to a sustainable, non-discriminatory school education and upbringing, regardless of possible disability, ethnic origin, race, religious or political opinion, language, and nationality. So there is a strong political responsibility for schools to create educational equality and inclusive education or inclusive schools. And this inclusion is uh, quite often limited to students in our thinking to students with special needs. But of course here inclusion means uh, students with, as said, uh, uh, different ethnic origin, race, and so on. So, and if we look uh, internationally, of course, we have the sustainable uh, uh, goals uh, in, in point, uh, 4.6 by the UNESCO. This uh, sustainable development goal says it is necessary and that we have to ensure that all youth and a substantial proportion of adults, both men and women, achieve literacy and numeracy. And I don't want to go into further discussions about numeracy and literacy and the distinction to mathematical learning. I mean, there are others here who could talk uh, like Ido Gal, who could do that much better than I am. So, but of course, uh, um, numeracy and mathematical literacy, mathematical competencies are an educational pathway uh, uh, for work. They are the gatekeeper for nearly all kind of ed educations we have, uh, 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 pro uh, professions we have. And of course, they are extremely important for societal participation. So, if, but if we look now uh, globally, what did we achieve so far? Then from the Global Education Monitoring Report, we see signs of strong inequality. In 2017, in the European Union, twice as many young people born abroad left school earlier as their native counterparts. We know from TIMS that there is a significant gap in mathematics performance of eighth grade students between international average and countries where the refugees come from. So the students are actually lagging behind and we know that uh, these students are not always offered the education they need in their new uh, country. And we know from PIAC migrant numeracy that there is actually a gap in numeracy skills between migrant and native students. So it's not only uh, a gap uh, between migrant students, migrant uh, uh, adults uh, concerning mathematics uh, uh, achievements, but uh, concerning numeracy as well. So if we now look at the schooling of migrant uh, students uh, in Germany, we have uh, in response to the increase in, in migration since especially 2015, you know, this huge migration wave, uh, which, uh, uh, which especially happened in 2015, uh, in nearly all federal states in Germany, so-called international preparatory classes, were uh, implemented uh, in which newly arrived children at secondary school, only at secondary school, not at primary school, that means secondary school starts in Germany with the age of 11 and then goes up to 18 or 19. And these uh, children uh, uh, at secondary school 
our in the first year schooled in so-called international preparatory classes. Um, and that is actually a model you will can, can find in many parts of the world, so that is not very specific for Germany. Uh, and in principle, it's planned that uh, the students stay there for 12 months, and then they actually go into the German mainstream classes. And of course, we have, this is one model we have uh, uh, for the models of integration. We have this uh, submersive or integrative models. We have partially integrative model or parallel and permanently per parallel models. And what we now can see, at least in Hamburg, that uh, this originally in parts only parallel models are now actually more or less moving to permanent parallel classes. It means the newly arrived students are prepared for graduation after one to three years. And it's very seldom that they really manage to go into ordinary uh, or into the mainstream classes after one year, although this is the original intention. And that puts actually quite a lot of a strong stress on the teachers. I will come uh, to this point afterwards. So what do we know? So what is the state of research and which research questions have we posed and how does our theoretical framework look like? So if you look at the discussion, and of course there are others here who, who would be much more qualified to talk about diversity and language, uh, but if we look at the discussion about international preparatory classes or classes for migrant students, however you want to call them all over the world, there is a, a strong diversity of the group of newly arrived students. And of course, they are diverse in terms of their language biographies, which language are they speaking? What kind of mathematical education have they experienced? How old are they? What kind of psychosocial uh, so background do they have? Do they have many traumas or whatsoever? So it is a strong diversity which characterizes uh, this specific group who are then uh, schooled actually in this uh, uh, specific classes. And of course you have the problem and the very strong discussion whether this is a resource or whether this diversity is a problem. And of course, you know that in many parts of the world, the deficit perspective on, uh, on uh, this uh, uh, diversity of the group of newly arrived students is dominant. Uh, and there is actually quite a lot of discussion around, especially in, in Hamburg, uh, which was promoted by Ingrid Gogolin already going back for longer than 30 years. And of course, there are newer research studies around which claim that the multilingual repertoire is a resource in mathematics learning and not a problem. And of course, there are studies around which try to show the, uh, that multilingualism is a resource, but uh, of course, uh, this is more an, a discussion within academia and less in politics. Uh, and studies which have been carried out in, in the last few years point out that this German language only policy, which we have at least in Germany, I know that there are other uh, initiatives in, in England, for example, uh, but uh, in, in Germany, we have this language only policy being quite dominant in, in, in many classes with newly migrated students. So the question is, of course, how do mathematics education teachers experience this diversity of migrant students in these international preparatory classes in which they are teaching? Do they see this as a resource or do they see it as a problem? So if we look at the dominant discourse in math education and from a broader perspective in education in general, we see that there is not only this uh, deficit versus or a diversity as problem or as resource discussion, we see a further development, namely uh, from language as problem to language as a resource. 
So it is pointed out, as especially by Susanne Brediger and others in her group, that language is a major learning medium used for communication and epistemic purposes. And therefore, uh, to learn language is a learning goal in mathematics classrooms. And in Hamburg, we have just new, newly developed uh, uh, educational uh, uh, syllabi. And it is, of course, emphasized that uh, language learning is a specific goal for all subjects. But you have to know that in Hamburg, in uh, our comprehensive school, 60% of our students have a so-called migrant background. So that means we have in Hamburg really a very big group of migrant students and of course of newly arrived students. However, we know that many teachers and po especially policymakers view mathematics as language-free. That means you don't need language uh, 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 in order to learn math because there are only symbols and numbers and that's sufficient if you understand uh, the symbols and, uh, and, and the numbers then you don't need to, uh, to learn, know uh, the language in order to learn mathematics. But of course we know as uh, you have to communicate in mathematics that is only part of the matter. And another aspect which is impo very important, and you will see it afterwards in the results, that uh, if you really uh, uh, consider the global economic power structures, you realize that the languages of specific migrant groups are often assigned a lower prestige than German or other European languages. For example, Arabic language is not as valued as, for example, French or as English. So, they have these uh, differences in the prestige. And uh, so overall, we can see uh, that uh, there is actually an established body of research on mathematical learning and teaching in multilingual classrooms, which emphasize that the inclusion of more than one language is highly product productive. So it is actually described that language is political or language is a resource. So that is actually the consensus within uh, the discourse in mathematics education. But of course, the, dis the discussion is going even further. Uh, and I have described it was la from language as resource to translanguaging. And I guess you are all familiar with this new uh, kind of construct. And uh, especially in math education, Richard Bauer uh, criticized this uh, notion of language as a resource because it sees language as a tool, which is not considering the socio-political aspects of language. So uh, he, together with, of course, many others, developed a position uh, that he very referred to sources of meaning. That means students and teachers have a repertoire of practices which are related to discourses and to language. And in their language, they say they language, students language mathematics rather than they use mathematical language. So you have a practice, when you practice mathematics, you practice mathematical language, you speak mathematics. So it's already going back to very early work by David Pim, for, uh, David Pim, for example. So language plays an active role in the meaning making process. So when you speak a language, when you speak the mathematical man, a language, then you actually receive or get insight into the meaning of mathematics. And this is called translanguaging or it is described as a fluid and deliberate interweaving of repertoires of more than one language in educational contexts. So that is actually, I would say, uh, the most current discourse. There are, of course, other much more radical uh, uh, discourses around, but I think for us, these aspects are of important. So to summarize, because translanguaging will then play uh, a certain uh, part in, in our results, uh, Garcia and others have summarized the function of translanguaging in pedagogy as follows. There are four key functions. 
the support of students when working with texts that are complex in terms of content and language. So you integrate and combine mathematics and language. It is actually an opportunity, this translanguaging is an opportunity for students to develop their language skills for academic contexts. It is the provision of space in which students' bilingualism or multilingualism uh, is actually really uh, acknowledged and it uh, really can come to the fore. And finally, it is actually a support and an acknowledgement of a young multilingual uh, uh, students' uh, identities and can therefore support their social emotional development. So there are many good reasons why uh, uh, translanguaging should play an important role, a role in mathematics education. So we have now formulated uh, two research questions. In this paper, we are going, or this study, we have uh, are focusing on teachers' perspectives on mathematical learning in, in the, uh, 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 international preparatory classes. That means with newly arrived students. And we ask, what strategies do teachers develop in, student, in dealing with students' language and mathematics-related diversity? How do they handle it? And what influences teacher strategies? And what consequences do these strategies and conditions have? So the theoretical framework, I have made it very, very short. It's actually uh, uh, fra uh, framed by two influencing factors. Namely, uh, language and culture are extremely important uh, for multilingual classes. Uh, and I've hopefully already described that quickly. So we have, of course, the highly important function of language. It has an epistemic function uh, uh, for learning mathematics. It actually plays a very important role in order to build conceptual understanding and promote students' understanding. It, of course, it especially promotes students' understanding when it comes to relations between not only numbers, but between geometrical figures and, of course, between, because we talked about that, about uh, algebraic relations. So uh, you need mathematics in order to really get insight into uh, uh, mathematics. The communicative function within a classroom is, of course, very important in learning mathematics. And it is an language is an object, not only a medium, but it's an object of learning as well, because there are many different expressions which are very specific, specifically used with a very specific meaning within mathematics. So, and very quickly about culture, we all know that mathematics education, like uh, many other subjects uh, education, is closely related to the culture of a country. There is, our, uh, there is research going on already for more than 40 years. Uh, and um, there are, for example, differences in the mathematical notation, for example, how you notify elementary uh, algorithm. And I have brought with me uh, a description how you actually write up uh, 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 the written division. And you see here different parts, Turkey, Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia, Italy, uh, Greece, and Spain. And you see different way how you write up uh, 7,860 uh, divided by 38. Very different ways, and you can easily imagine that you are getting confused uh, when you uh, are, have to suddenly write up something very differently, what you have already done in a, a certain way. So, and of course, there are differences in pedagogical approaches, in ideas, and of course, the school curriculum is different all over the world. So, that is the, uh, uh, the our theoretical framework, considering actually language and culture. So our methodical appro uh, approach can be described very quickly. Uh, we had as participants in our uh, study six teachers who were teaching newly arrived students at secondary level and they came from three schools in Hamburg with uh, two from comprehensive schools and one from a higher track uh, school what we call gymnasium. 
So, and the students they were teaching uh, came actually from Syria, Afghanistan, Iran, Serbia, Pakistan, Pakistan, Bulgaria, Gambia, India, and Macedonia. So it's quite a, 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 represent, a, a, a representative overview on refugees we had before the Ukrainian war started. So very quickly, the participating teachers, they were very different actually in their um, experience in teaching in general and in teaching uh, 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 migrant cl uh, 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 classes. So first of all, you see over here, uh, the migrant classes were actually ranging year seven to eight. So the students are about 13 years old. And when they are in grade nine to 10, then they are around 15 to 16. Uh, we had here Mrs. Schröder, who actually had a teaching experience of 35 years. So she was close actually to retirement. And we have here Ms. Engel, and she has only three years of teaching experience. So you see a, a big variety in the teaching experience. And actually, but uh, was, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, um, uh, there's two teachers, Mr. Lee and Ms. Schröder, who actually have experience in teaching migrant students already for a long time. All the others have actually more or less started. And with one exception, we had all their comprehensive schools. And in com comprehensive schools, all, uh, uh, all uh, students are taught, but there is some kind of selection that uh, the more able students try to enter the higher track school, uh, the so-called gymnasium. And you see that over here, that here the current number of uh, migrant classes here, you see at the gymnasium, there was only one uh, uh, a migrant uh, international preparatory class in here in one, in another comprehensive school, he even had six. So you could see that there is a kind of tendency uh, uh, for this, um, migrant or this international preparatory classes to be based at a little bit lower uh, level scores. So we carried out open interviews with the teachers and actually, but I'm only referring very quickly to the interviews with the students. And uh, Michael did, uh, in addition, very extensive classroom observations. The theme of the interviews were experiences with, uh, uh, with teaching migrant students. Uh, theoretically, we have chosen the grounded theory approach by Strauss and Corbin, and we carried out open axial and selective coding and developed the coding paradigm and constant comparison processes. Uh, to, I will quickly describe afterwards the coding paradigm. So the co coding paradigm consisted actually for, uh, uh, of the central phenomenon, which we described as students' language and mathematics related diversity. So that's the diversity of students concerning language and the mathematics related skills. Uh, following uh, the coding paradigm uh, structure, we had some kind of causal conditions which you should not uh, uh, interpret in a de deterministic way. I will come uh, back to that in a few minutes. We had some kind of intervening conditions which are actually influences, influencing uh, the way uh, uh, teachers are teaching. And we have, and I will focus on this aspect, teacher strategies, and we have possible consequences. And I have uh, actually will concentrate on teacher strategies uh, and uh, very briefly only describe the conditions the causal and the intervening conditions and the consequences. So I will now start with the results. First of all, that means uh, I'm now tackling the first research question, namely which strategies have teachers developed in dealing with students' language, mathematics-related diversity. And we have uh, distinguished four categories, language, lesson objectives, teaching approaches, and lesson design. Uh, and I will actually uh, afterwards describe three specific themes, uh, two from language, na namely supporting students' uh, a German language learning process and building upon teachers and students' multilingualism as a resource for learning mathematics. And concerning the teaching approaches, 
I have selected a scene uh, with uh, refers to individualized learning experience. Uh, and we have, of course, scenes to all the others uh, 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 aspects as well, but due to uh, time constraint, I have selected these three uh, very meaningful scenes. So, as already mentioned, we selected three examples, and the first example comes from the category language, uh, and we have called it the illegitimizing, uh, uh, illegitimizing the use of the first language in the classroom, and you can already imagine what that means. So uh, this uh, description stems out of the interview with, with Ms. Engel, this young motivated teacher uh, who actually was has just finished her second teacher examination three years ago. And what she did was she used in her teaching several translation methods from for foreign language pedagogy, for example, a dictionary in their first language. So this dictionary, uh, the students uh, were really writing up. But apart from this uh, 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 dictionary approach, there were hardly any multilingual practices. Uh, in contrast, uh, a monolingual approach dominated without considering language as a resource or translanguaging. And I have brought with me a, 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 a short excerpt, she said in the interview, I never let the various language speakers sit with each other, but I do allow students with different languages to sit next to each other so that they have to speak to each other in German or English. The languages I certainly know because I don't want them to talk about something completely different without me noticing. So, I mean, the interpretation is very clear. Uh, uh, she wants to control the classroom activities. She wants to know what is going on. I mean, that is understandable, but uh, maybe not so helpful in order to support uh, a diverse uh, a, a student force. She is actually, of course, very clearly excluding the linguistic repertoires or resources by the students. So, because they could not speak uh, in the language uh, apart from English or German. And when these students came from Syria and only uh, speak an Arabic language, then they had no chance to participate in the classroom discourse. So she was actually excluding uh, uh, students who didn't speak English or German from the classroom discourse. And what you can see over here is really this reprodu reproduction of language hierarchy, uh, hierarchies. German, English, okay, maybe French, if, the, if she would have been able to speak French. So what we can see is actually really a devaluation of students' identity uh, referring to comments. And it's actually in line, but, and that is, I mean, would say the sad thing, that this is in line with the German uh, agenda of supporting proficiency, proficiency in German language as a key to integ integration. So she is totally aligned, in line with our policymakers. So the second example I have brought with me uh, is, uh, comes from the category teaching approaches, and we have called that differentiation as the main response to students' mathematics-related diversity. And we have selected an interview with Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee was a very uh, experienced teacher for migrant students, and he was working with migrant students, students already for a very long time. And he described the difficulty in these of finding adequate teaching materials at the beginning of his work, when he started to work with migrant students. And he said, it was hard to find teaching materials for them. And it was very difficult to create some material myself. In other words, you don't differentiate three times. You would have had to differentiate on one, seven, eight different levels, and I didn't have the time. Accordingly, I helped myself with what I had. It was above all fact, factor, it's a math book, it's a precursor of Secundo, another book which is now very common in, in, term, in, in classrooms in Hamburg, so to speak, and I will, wrote different work plans for the years five, six, seven. So 
if we want to interpret what we uh, what he said is it's very clear that he was really caring about students diversity he wanted to address their diversity but he said he saw it as a problem especially of the individual learner not as a potential and he more or less restricted himself uh, 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 to individualized learning approaches which actually is not manageable if you have, at least if you are not cooperating with other teachers, which none of our teachers did. So they were all uh, uh, working on their own. So if you have 20 uh, uh, students in a class, all at different uh, uh, level, then you can't uh, differentiate uh, for all students. So what he did was this writing of the lesson plans, which were actually then oriented towards the curriculum and not towards the need of the students. So they were to a certain extent individualized, but of course, uh, oriented at, uh, along the curricular uh, requirements. And that brought, as a consequence, uh, some difficulties, because he described that the students work through the lesson plan on their own, without engagement in the classroom discourse. And that created afterwards problems for mainstream classes. He said he described his own teaching. So there is very little classroom discussion. And then they come to the mainstream classroom. There is relatively much classroom discussion where they are expected to participate. Their partner and group work are sometimes required. And of course, they are social forms that they do not know. And um, I mean, German uh, education is strongly characterized by partner and group work. Uh, uh, teacher speaking at the black uh, uh, at the blackboard is not the usual way of teaching anymore. So, to a certain extent, he tries to cater for the needs of the students. But on the other hand, he didn't prepare them well for afterwards the mainstream classes. And the third example I have brought with me, and of course I thought I should at least bring some sign of hope. Uh, with me, it is from the category language another time, and it is it describes first steps towards trans languaging practices in mathematics classroom. And here we refer to classroom observations, which Michael did in addition as well. I described mentioned that, and uh, the classroom observations were made by Miss Daduba, who had migrated to Germany a couple of years ago, and she spoke Farsi, German, English and had the basic knowledge of Arabic, of Arabic language. And you can already imagine that this is actually a huge resource she brings uh, with her into such a classroom. So what she did as a practice and that we could reconstruct as a practice was uh, that she facilitated language comparisons quite actively all, during the whole lessons. And she actually encouraged the students to clarify the meaning of mathematical words in their own, in their own first language with which they had uh, entered the classrooms. And they had multilingual vocabulary list uh, with words in different languages and scripts, and they were actually hanging at the wall. And especially important was that she grouped the students in language homogeneous groups, and they enc she encouraged them to use their first language in order to access mathematical content. So a very different practice to uh, the first uh, teacher who actually uh, for, uh, had forbidden the, the students to speak in their own language. And actually we could reconstruct these first steps towards trans languaging practices uh, with another teacher as well, Ms. Schroeder, who was highly experienced but only spoke German and English. All the teachers uh, uh, spoke uh, uh, more or less well English or at least sufficiently English. Uh, and she uh, promoted uh, 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 first trans languaging practices in language homogeneous groups as well. And she said, and the nice thing about the immigrant class is that they help each other. If one of them sees that the other one can't do it well, he immediately sits down, asks, can I sit down? And then they try to speak in a kind of language mix. They speak different languages. 
And I guess we can imagine what kind of powerful resource this actually is really uh, uh, offering to the students. So what do we know actually what the students say? And I mentioned it very quickly that Michael did in addition uh, students interviews. And in order to show a little bit the student side, I have simply uh, brought into uh, a few excerpts from the students interview. This high relevance of German language in mathematics classroom, this German uh, uh, only policy is seen by the students as barrier. Farid said, first time I come to Germany, I'm sitting in class like a fish. I say nothing. I mean, that is, what can you think about that? Student describe herself as a fish. And concerning the strong connection between language and mathematical understanding, Maria said, exactly, we can't understand the text so well, what we have to do, for example, because of the task, task, uh, task text. If we can understand the task text, then we, then we are able to do. So you see that the students realize very strictly or very clearly uh, what is really going on and actually how they are supported or less supported. So I'm now coming to the uh, second research question, namely what, kind, what influences these strategies by the teachers and what consequences do those strategies and conditions have? So we have, uh, as already mentioned in the coding paradigm, uh, reconstructed the so-called causal conditions, as I said, not deterministic conditions and context. And what we of course can see that there is a growing number of students with different migration histories and different cultural and educational background, and their number is growing, not only uh, to a uh, cause of the Ukrainian war, it was already growing before. So, uh, and the problem is that uh, because uh, you have migration during the whole year, maybe a little bit more in summertime than in wintertime, but students enter these classes within the whole year. So that means it is actually, uh, uh, you cannot start and uh, deliver your teaching and plan it at the beginning of the year because you may have different students at the end of the year. So you, you really have, a, as a, a, a Ingrid Gogelin called it, a super diversity in these classes, especially as there is no joint language, at least at the beginning. There are strong, uh, there are guidelines by the Ministry of School and Vocational Education in Hamburg, which, uh, which put a strong emphasis on learning German, 10 to 20 hours per week. And the other subjects, including mathematics, are seen as less important. So it is the policy uh, that uh, uh, students should learn uh, uh, lang German language at the beginning. And then you can actually, when they learn German and when they have learned German, they speak German, then you can uh, uh, school them properly. But most of these teachers who are teaching mathematics in these classes are not, are not experienced in teaching mathematics as a second language. They were trained as math teachers. Four out of the six teachers were mathematics teachers. So how should they know how to teach German as, uh, as a second language. They don't know it. And uh, yes, and mathematics learning is actually not very important. I will come to this point in a minute. So, but the explicit goal is to bring students to the official secondary school exams when they are 15 or 16. So the teachers expressed very clearly that they feel left alone. They do not receive the support they actually need in this situation. So concerning the intervening conditions, there is actually quite a strong, and you could see it from the few examples, and of course we have to be cautious because it's only six teachers, but there is a, a, a strong influence of teachers' work experience and their education. So if teachers are teach, have taught in, in such kind of classes for several years, they uh, have their own materials and they uh, uh, felt better prepared compared to the beginning. Then uh, another, another very important condition is the language ide uh, ideologies. That means it's seen that language is the problem 
and that they have to teach Germ in a German only policy, that only German is allowed as, uh, as language, maybe English, but uh, that is actually really the way how you have to teach uh, the students. There are missing curriculum and instructional guidelines. Actually, uh, there is a usage of usual textbooks. There are a few uh, uh, newer textbooks, but uh, most, are, uh, um, especially in the last few years, adequate textbooks were missing. And Mr. Peters said, there is no curriculum, no syllabus, only at best an awareness of what is required for examinations. So you know what the students have to know at the end uh, 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 of, uh, of the schooling, and that is actually what you have to teach them. And so the teachers felt a very strong time pressure. So they had the impression that they have not a sufficient time to prepare students for the upcoming uh, examinations, which of course are very important in order to continue their schooling in vocational schools or start uh, something differently. So consequences. So what, can, uh, can, uh, what consequences do those strategies and conditions have for the teachers? First of all, we could reconstruct very clearly effective problems. Teachers were really strongly frustrated due to the structural difficulties, namely that they, on the one hand, should focus on the individual student and really cater for the di this, their diversity. And on the other hand, they should bring the students to examinations. So that was, and that should be done simultaneously. Then they saw uh, 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 structural problems. So uh, they subordinated mathematics learning to German le language learning because you have to first learn German and then you can learn mathematics properly. And if they were doing uh, mathematics learning or ma mathematics teaching, then they focused on easier calculation oriented or transmission oriented tasks. So that was very clear. So Ms. Daduba said, yes, of course, we also do a lot of calculation. No, there's not really a lot of mathematics that can be done. So the real math is done after the uh, students speak German. And Mr. Lee said, subtraction, addition, multiplication, division, data and number, fractions, quantities, that's it what you can do and you can't do more unless they have learned German. And finally, they saw a very problematic transition from the safe space in the preparatory classes to mainstream classes where they then have to actually cope with the other students, where they actually need to know how to do group work, how to express themselves. And Mr. Lee said that is actually really a culture shock. So you see that the teachers did not feel uh, supported or they had really strong uh, uh, frustration or uh, uh, problems. So I would like now to close my talk with limitations and possible consequences. Of course, sorry, it should have read, read uh, six teachers, sorry. So it is the, uh, uh, the limitation of only six teachers. And of course, it is a convenient study that means uh, we have probably selected the highly engaged teachers. The teachers who are actually really struggling would probably not, be, not have been willing to allow Michael Lusenhoek to enter the classroom and give, uh, make an interview with her. So, and then finally, I would think that we need to bring together systematically the students and the teacher's perspectives because they both bring together actually uh, quite a, a broader perspective how the students experience this uh, way of teaching. So, and what are easy, from my point, easy consequences? And that is very clear, the inclusion of calculation methods from countries of origin. I mean, we know that uh, the calculation methods are uh, uh, written up in different ways. I mean, that is well known for more than 40 or 50 years. So what we could do actually explain uh, 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 or ask the students to explain in detail how uh, a certain calculation methods work, which they have learned, learned in their countries of origin, and which are actually in contrast to the methods they now learn in the international preparatory classes. And Basia said, 
For example, my mother showed me a few ways that, for example, Germans don't know. Germans have a different way, but I go from different way, but we get only one result. And of course, afterwards, students can reflect that although the methods are different, the results and the formulae are the same. So Sora said, formulae are the same, but calculation and explanation are different. So that is a very, uh, I would say, powerful way to actually value the knowledge of the, student, uh, of the students and the kind of knowledge they bring with them and they actually enter uh, a classroom. So the address overall, it is a strong need to address students' perspectives on mathematical learning. That means, uh, and of course, different calculation methods can be, and their comparison could be, uh, should play an important uh, a part uh, in mathematics classroom. And it should not be uh, taught in such a way that only the German way of writing up uh, 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 division or multiplication are allowed. And this way, uh, the, uh, the knowledge, the mathematical knowledge that the migrant students bring with them are actually valued as a resource. And of course, it would stimulate uh, the learning of language within the learning of mathematics. And I would think that this is the most important aspect. And you could see it in Sora's perspective that you really can see that there is, of course, a variety uh, uh, in uh, in the ways how you do math. But of course, at the end, <clears throat> if you do the same thing, then you come to uh, the same results. So it is this universal, uh, universal structure of mathematics, which actually can then be discussed with the students. So the conclusion, I would think that the diversity of perspectives really point out to numerous, numerous opportunities and approaches to identify and support the competencies of newly arrived students. And really uh, with these kind of uh, uh, broadened uh, uh, support, uh, allow them uh, to be integrated into the German school system. But what I think is really has become clear that the teachers need support. They need to be better trained in teacher education and they need support by, uh, for example, um, teaching materials, by working in groups, all these teachers said that they are working alone. None of them was cooperating. I mean, that is actually something which would not does not really uh, support stu a teachers' own professional development. And of course, some implications. We have to see that uh, we need not only multilingual but multi mathematical approaches. That we need a strong need that we need inclusive pedagogy and inclusive approaches really catering for the diversity of our students, adequate teaching materials, and at the end we need a more explicit pedagogy which really uh, enables our teachers to cater explicitly uh, uh, for a, di a diverse uh, a studentship. So I thank you very much for your attention. I just uh, thank you very much. I think that's all the questions. That was an absolutely brilliant presentation and some wonderful questions. Um, thanks to everybody. It's a very special evening because it's the last of the virtual seminars for um, for this year. Um, I'll hand you over to Beth now and just. Well, thank you, Catherine and um, Lisanne. And thank you very much, Gabriella and Maker, for uh, this um seminar this evening. It has been really interesting and um, some very useful points for reflecting on, I think. It's made, it's making me think about a few um, experiences I've had and, and I'm sure we'll have again in the future. So thank you so much and we look forward to the articles and papers when they come out about your work. <laughs>